Hi, today I want to talk to you uh, about a few different strategies for adjusting exposure in an image. Now, um, we're going to start here in Lightroom, we're going to bring it over to Photoshop, and, and the things that I really want to focus on are the Photoshop things, but I think it's important to start here for a few different reasons. Now, this particular image has um, a kind of a flat look to it, and I shot it this way on purpose. If you look at the histogram, we see this big peak here over on the right. This is representing the highlights, and that's all of this going on here in the pond. If I had exposed it for the dog's face, then what would happen is um, we'd lose all that detail. And so if, if we were somewhere in here, you can see how that's all washed out, and that's not really what I want. So. Um, by by making the exposure kind of flat like this, I can get the best of both worlds. I can get nice detail up here, and I can bring back detail here in the shadow. And um, by by kind of compressing that exposure at the camera level, I can then bring it up and make it look just like I want to in um, post processing. So that's the benefit here. Um, so of course we already showed you what it looks like if you move the exposure up. Um, we can also move the shadows up, and that does a pretty good job. And we can move the blacks up, and that one um, less good for this particular image, but still a little bit of value. So if we just default these settings here, you can see the triangle is active, and that means we're we're having some shadow clipping. Um, basically, it's in the nose and the mouth, and so that's not an area I'd be concerned about because you know, frankly, you don't want to be looking that far into a nose or a mouth, and so it's appropriate for that to go a little dark, but. Um, that's where I'd probably move this, the blacks up just a little bit, maybe to, to bring those up just past absolute black, and then shadows I'd maybe bring up a little bit here. Now, if this is a technique that works for a, a well-exposed image like this, but even if you have a poorly exposed image and you want to bring back that shadow detail, it works pretty well. Um, the problem is that it introduces noise and so again this is pretty well exposed and so even if I crank these all the way up we're not getting uh, really any noise added but had I had it a little bit underexposed so let's say instead of um, you know instead of starting off here I'd started off somewhere in here uh, pushing the wrong button that helps um, somewhere in here, then I would absolutely be introducing noise and that's something I'd want to avoid. So, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add just a little bit of shadows, a little bit of blacks, I'm actually going to boost the saturation just a touch too. And I'm going to bring it over into Photoshop. Um, I'm going to do this as a smart object. So if we just do edit in and then edit in Photoshop, it brings it as a background layer. Um, I specifically want this as a smart object because one of the tools that I'm going to use is um, dependent on that smart object. So here we are again this is not a background layer because you can see there's a file name we can see there's a little icon so we know that that is um, in fact a smart object. You can if you bring it over as a background layer or if you are working on an image and you want to use this filter or these tools um, you can always convert to a smart object um, by right clicking here and then convert to smart object. Um, of course it's already a smart object so there's no point in doing that here but um, there might be in your workflow. Um, one of the things about this is we can always go back and tweak those develop module settings by double clicking. That'll open up the Adobe Camera Raw window which is the exact same set of tools just packaged in a different way. So uh, one of the ways that, that you might consider making these this image a little bit brighter is as a um, adjustment layer. So we have brightness, contrast, levels, curves, um, exposure. Um, I pretty much never use that one, but um, it's also available to you. And we also have over here um, image adjustments, the same set of tools. But if this had been not a smart object and we applied these here, this would be a one and done as opposed to as an adjustment layer we can always go back and adjust it after the fact. So here I'm going to show you how um, the brightness contrast works. Um, we add that in there, we can bring that up and it does a decent job. Um, we're starting to see a little bit uh, blown out detail here in the side of the face and certainly in the pond. We can adjust that a little bit by using the layer mask but um, you know it, it's probably not ideal. It does It does a pretty decent job here. Next, I'm going to show you layers, excuse me, levels. Um, here we've got three sliders, those black slider, the 
the highlight slider, and then midtones. And so for this one, we wanted to use the midtones and bring up some of that detail. And again, this is a pretty flat looking image, but once we bring the detail up, then we can, we can start to work in adding in some contrast. Um, output sliders, these are things that I use basically for, for printing, um, but basically understand that the um, shadow and highlight sliders move without the mid-tone. Next is curves. So whereas curves basically had three levels to work with, now we've got um, basically 256. We've got a shadow slider just like the uh, levels did. We've got a highlight slider, but we can also move all of these things in between. And so for this, I want to bring up the shadows, but I don't really want to do any of, of this highlight area. So what I can do is I can, I can bring this tone curve back down. Um, when, whenever you have a, a pretty big adjustment like this, where it affects the, the entire exposure, it really helps to add some, some different dots in here to lock that down. So basically we're saying to curves, you know, don't use this part of the image uh, or this part of the, the brightness when we're making this adjustment. And we can do a pretty good job here. Uh, you can see that it can pretty quickly get out of control. And um, by fine tuning this and, and you know spending the time with it, we can get to a pretty decent effect. Um, definitely takes a little bit of time and a little bit of practice, but um, there's an easier way is actually. So unlike these tools where you can do them as adjustment layers, this one has to be as a um, basically smart object. And we're doing shadows and highlights. If we don't use this on a if we use this on a background layer or any other pixel layer, then this is a permanent adjustment. The advantage here is this is a smart object, we can go back and fine tune it, and that's very important um, in my workflow. Uh, basically for the shadows and highlights we've got three sets of, of sliders, the amount, the tone, and the radius. Um, pushing things to the right adds and you can see we get things pretty bright. The key here to getting a nice effect is the radius tool and basically what we're doing is telling Photoshop that we want to maintain a, a difference. So if, if we keep this all the way down now we're just adjusting everything. By uh, moving the radius up we're saying if there is not enough difference between brightness and, and shadow, then um, don't change it. So here we keep the shadows pretty far down, and we can we can bring this up. And you want to move these sliders, you know, in conjunction with each other. So you know, tweak this a little bit, and then then maybe bring back this a little bit, and, and see how it works. There's no one right formula that's going to work for all of your images and it's really going to be exposure and um, subject dependent. We probably want to bring back a little bit more detail here in the pond, just a little bit more color, and again uh, maybe the radius a little bit just to to make this um, have a little bit more of a snap. And we're, and we're in pretty good shape. Now one of the things that can happen is that our colors can get uh, a little bit out of whack, so that's why we have a color slider here. Um, you can see that the default is was 20. If we keep it just at you know zero or, or one or two, uh, it seems kind of undersaturated. Uh, but somewhere around 20, I think we get a pretty good effect. Midtone here, we can again just kind of tweak in the same way that the radius tweaks that where it's being applied, and that way we can maintain nice sharp details throughout the image. So there you have it, uh, basically uh, four ways here in Photoshop to adjust your brightness and ex uh, contrast and exposure, and a couple of ways in, in Lightroom. I definitely encourage you to give this Shadow Highlights a try. It's a very powerful tool, and I think that you'll find that it's, it's an easy way to bring that compressed dynamic range uh, image into a, a nice um, high contrast image. Uh, from here I'd probably give it a little bit more tweaking. I'd give it you know, maybe a, a little bit of a contrast adjustment and um, you know, basically we're good. I ended out the leash and um, I'd be pretty happy with that image. Let me know if you have any questions. I really encourage you to again give these uh, tools a try, especially um, start, start practicing with the shadow highlights. I think you'll like it.